if you have any, okay. Um, and so you do need to respond to that, that you, you understand, or if you don't want to be, then you'd have to leave, I guess that's kind of a, how it works. Um, but we're, you know, it, for us, it's also great because then we can post this on the website. And so for people who haven't, weren't able to participate, they can kind of see what the, the whole plan is about. Um, and uh, this, this study is being sponsored by a regional transportation authority grant. Um, and uh, the RT, RTA in combination with the, in, in partnership with the Village of University Park are sort of leading this effort. Uh, my name is Christine Carlisle. I'm a principal in, uh, of planning at SCB or Solomon Corbel Benz here in Chicago. We've got a fantastic team um, here, but SCB is, is uh, uh, going to be looking at the land use planning, um, some of the urban design, and the uh, project management. Uh, joining uh, as part of our team, we also have the Goodman Williams Group. You'll probably hear from them a little uh, later about the market analysis. That's uh, Linda Goodman and uh, Kristen Hayes. Uh, we we also have uh, Sam Schwartz. Um, they are uh, the transportation uh, specialists um, that are part of our team. You'll be hearing from Holly Chase. We also have um, our a great team here at SCB. We've got Yashashvi. Um, she is running the 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 kind of uh, the Zoom call, the tech uh, the technical side of things. Plus, she's also going to be presenting some things. And we have Nick Pryor, um, Abinoff, and uh, Albert who are on the team. So uh, we're going to move on to our um, sort of first uh, exercise. We want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, so it's it's about getting to know you, and, and we want to hear about you and the village uh, goals for you know, this area. Um, but part of where we're gonna start, it's a little icebreaker, is we would like you to use the, the, the chat. So if you go to the bottom of your screen and hover down there, if you're, uh, if you're able to that, if you're on a phone, I know sometimes that's a little complicated. Um, we would like to know if you're willing to provide your name, how long you've lived in University Park or had a business here. You know, and then, you know, if, you know, if you've got you know, one, two, three words that come to mind when you think of University Park, we'd like to hear that. Uh, it just sort of helps us sort of set the tone for, um, you know, what's, you know, how people see their community, which is very helpful to us. So, um, and we'll, you know, we can read off some of those things as we, you know, as we get them from you. So with that, so think about it, but you know, give us some give us some feedback right away. Um, so the next uh, slide, please, um, is just while you're thinking about your three words, um, you know, our meeting uh, agenda for today is really to give you a little bit of overview about the plan. Um, we're going to also we've, we've gone through a little bit of the, our introduction. Um, we've got some uh, project uh, over, uh, overview and goals that we will we'll cover in just a few minutes, uh, give you a little bit of understanding about the timeline, um, what the existing conditions uh, are surrounding the station, you know, roadways, land areas, who you knows ownership, you know, thinking about access into the site. Um, we have a, a preliminary sort of overview on the market, so that gives some demographics about, you know, what where the demand models might be for different kinds of land uses. Um, and then looking at transportation analysis where some of the kind of choke points are in roadways and, and issues with in terms of, of sort of the pedestrian um, and the bicyclists and automotive and transit and then you know sort of how that whole intermodal of all those different types of mode of transportations work together. Um, we have uh, some stakeholder uh, engagement that's happened, which means, you know, who are the businesses, um, the, the people who are very actively involved in different organizations. We're trying to reach out to, to hear from uh, individual groups about their, um, their points of view and their needs, such as Governor State University or some of the businesses that are in the, um, the governor's um, uh, gateway uh, industrial park and you know, so we're, we're trying to really understand what the, the different users are and how that might work in the um, and, and their needs might be accommodated in the, the, the planning surrounding the, the transit area. So um, and then we're going to have a, a, a our, our main focus today is really thinking about 
sort of the vision and goals and hearing from you. So we have a whole interactive session that will be part of looking at the precedents. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up with a few next steps. So um, with that, you know, I wanted to just jump into just a, a slight overview on the planning uh, strategies or the, um, so the planning overview. You wanna to move to the next one, Yashashvi? So here you can see, this is the half mile surrounding the station. Big red dot is where the station is. It's got two parking lots on either side, connections um, underneath uh, Governor's Highway. Um, there was always a, a plan for development. It didn't happen for a variety of reasons over the years. Um, there's a lot of great opportunity now, and especially with some of the growth that's happening. Um, this new uh, you know, interchange on, for at I-57 and Snuckel Road has really changed the, the, the opportunities for the industrial park. Um, that's driving lots of jobs. There's a need for housing. You can hear about uh, things associated with that. So now I think the time is right for more transit-oriented development and being able to work through you know, sort of the, the station goals for that. There have been a number of plans. There was an update uh, to the TO Day plan that was done in uh, 2002. There were a lot of good ideas about that, thinking about housing and access and um, and issues associated with open space and, and parking. Um, and then there, you know, we've identified a number of economic development uh, opportunities associated with local real estate trends. So that's something you're gonna hear about, uh, as well as, you know, there is mobility in, in, in it today has a lot to do with how do you make your connections? So what does that last mile look like? And, you know, from, you know, if you get off the train, how do you get to work? If you want, if you live at home and how do you get to the train station if you want to go into Chicago? And how easy is that to, to do? So those are some of the things that, we, that our team is looking at, and especially the Sam Schwartz um, group have really focused in on those, those types of um, concerns, as well as um, thinking about safety. So Vision Zero is, is, is a strategy that's out there. It's been worked at, across the country, but really reducing um, you know, uh, the pedestrian uh, uh, fatalities and, 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 and injuries, um, bicyclists, you know, sharing the road, all the things that are really important, uh, as well as automobile car crashes, but to be able to think about how do you create that, you know, zero tolerance for, for um, you know, those safety issues. So anyways, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nick Pryor, who's going to give you a little overview on the project and the timeline and take it away. Yeah, so um, nice to see everybody. Uh, this is a quick overview of the, the schedule. Uh, so this just kind of gives you an idea of where we are uh, in the process and where we're headed. So as you can see, we're kind of right there in the middle at community meeting number one. So this is really exciting. We've been working since uh, late last year, getting uh, existing conditions, doing a lot of research, beginning to talk to, to some community members, some stakeholders about the, the potential and opportunities here. Uh, but it's really this meeting that, that we're excited to kind of open it up to, the, to, to everyone and uh, involve everyone in the process. So we're going to run through a lot of the stuff we've done so far. And then coming out of here, we're going to take your feedback and start working on some of the things Christine was mentioning. And then we'll be back in uh, late May for a community meeting number two. So we'll give you an update of what we've been up to, uh, another opportunity for your feedback. Uh, and then uh, we'll go off and continue our work and be back in, um, what was that, July for the, the third community meeting. So uh, if you guys want to mark your calendars for that, kind of stay tuned. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity coming up for uh, involvement. So I think with that, um, we wanted to, to jump into some of the research we've been doing. Uh, so we've been spending a lot of time getting to increase our understanding of the existing conditions analysis, kind of the way things are today. And to run you through that, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Yushasvi. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. uh, so University Park has several competitive advantages. The Governor's, Governor's State University is attracting local as well as international students, contributing significantly to the local economy. It is also adjacent to our site the study area around the metro station, so it has potential for future collaboration. The I-57 and Stunkel Road interchange, when it opened, it has connected Gateway Industrial Park to the larger Chicago land. This, along with the low tax rate of Will County, has prompted several businesses like Amazon and Carvana to locate their facilities in the region. 
And then the metro train, train station itself, it is the terminal station, station on this line and it, it is attracting communities from neighboring suburban areas, who people who want to travel for leisure and work purposes. And last but not the most important one is the proactive community of the University Park itself, who are actively engaged in different economic development initiatives. All of this development has brought several opportunities to the University Park. There are like proposed retail and commercial developments in the Gateway Industrial Park along the Stunkel Road. And then we have a lot of proposed multi-use paths in the university park and the streetscape development, which will increase pedestrian mobility within the village and connectivity to the metro station. We also have a lot of new jobs coming in in the industrial park uh, with Amazon and Carvana and other businesses opening up. And they bring along with them a lot of demand for housing and retail. And university park has a lot of vacant land, which is the potential for growth along the Stunkel Road around the metro station, and it has significant amount of natural features and open spaces to provide quality living areas for the people. Uh, from this place, I'll hand over to Christian. Sure, Linda, do you want to briefly introduce Gunnar Williams Group and yourself before I dig into the data? Linda? You're I have to unmute first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the quickest on the tech front. Um, yeah. Again, I'm Linda Goodman, founding principal of Goodman Williams Group, and Kristen Hayes is um, one of um, the project managers, and she will talk to you in a minute. But what um, our role in this um, uh, transit-oriented developments plan is really to provide some market analysis to make sure that we're as as the planners and everybody are thinking forward that we make sure it's realistic and give a sense of the timing and what kind of housing how much commercial and how it will compete with some of the other areas so um, with that i'm going to turn it over to Kristen. sure next slide please and good morning everyone university park i'm Kristen hayes uh, project manager um, so as Linda just mentioned, our role here is to really use our research to recognize the trends that are occurring in University Park from demographics to the employment to the residential, uh, retail, and, and industrial uh, real estate markets. So our findings are really here to identify the market drivers and the real opportunities um, and ensure that the recommendations that come out of this plan are rooted in market realities and can be successful. So digging into the data just a bit, I'm giving a few quick highlights. Um, and again, this is just preliminary information. Looking at the demographic trends, the yellow, yellow bars here show this population totals between 2000 and 2020, which we see is a pretty limited growth. The blue bars are showing uh, forecasted population, which is showing pretty extensive, extensive growth into 2050. And while that 20,000 number is a bit optimistic and maybe a bit exaggerated, with the added jobs and land available, we do think that population growth in University Park should be expected and needs to be planned for. Moving over to the right side of the screen, employment trends. One of the great stories in University Park is just the number of jobs that have been added. Uh, Governor State has remained a major employer, but the addition of some industrial users, including Amazon and others, has added thousands of jobs over the last 20 years. And the jobs keep coming with car opening at Carvana and other um, employers that are trying to set up shop in University Park. One uh, kind of interesting stat we found is that of the 4,000 or so jobs in University Park, only about 2% are held by University Park residents. So finding a balance, uh, kind of increasing the number of those who live and work in University Park is going to be a goal of ours going forward. Next slide, please. All right, so being a TOD plan, we are going to look very closely at residential trends to try to find some viable housing options that could be successful near the metro station. Um, some initial research finds that there's quite a bit of housing diversity already in University Park, with about half of the occupied housing units uh, being owned and half being rented, as seen in that pie chart, the green and yellow one. And the bar below um, shows about half of the homes are your single family detached homes with, you know, doesn't share a wall and a driveway, but half are either townhomes or condos or apartment units. So seeing that diversity early on is kind of a good starter here for us as we look for um, more diversified housing options in University Park. And the top of the screen uh, is showing housing age. We're seeing a bit of an aging housing stock in University Park um, with less than 10% being built in the last 20 years. So all this together is really indicating to us that uh, there's a need for uh, some newer updated housing um, that can be can add to the diversification of what's already there. Next slide, please. 
right? We will also dig into retail and industrial trends, starting with retail. Um, we are looking in, for retail, we're looking kind of all at all of University Park and its neighbors to kind of determine the competitive position and to find retail options that would be um, viable near the metro station. So in University Park now, the retail inventory is a bit modest. Uh, half of the inventory is in the University Park Town Center, which is outside of the TOD, but do, does provide us a lot of information of who's working, uh, sorry, who's doing business currently in University Park. Um, so we will be inventorying those as well as uh, becoming familiar with all of the new industrial projects that we know are slated to come to University Park um, in the future. And looking at this compared to um, kind of the market area or looking outside of University Park to see where residents are currently shopping and where we can attract dollars in University Park from residents as well as visitors. Uh, moving over to the right, the industrial market, another awesome story about University Park is just the, the um, success of industrial uses here. So the green bars are showing the total inventory in square feet year over year, which we see just increasing um, up until 2021 with the addition of Amazon. And the yellow is showing the vacancy rate, which we see decreasing. So seeing an increased inventory with a decreased vacancy is showing really high demand here for industrial uses and something that we'll definitely be building off of um, in our recommendations. And so while we look at all of these sections individually, the goal here is to really identify the connections between each to ensure that the recommendations for housing and retail and industrial uses are taking advantage of the positive trends uh, occurring in University Park, like the addition of jobs, um, and that the new developments can complement each other and are successful. Um, and with that, I know we went over a lot really quick, so I'll be happy to answer questions towards the end of the presentation. But for now, I'll pass it over to Holly at Sam Schwartz. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Holly Chase. I am a transportation planner um, at Sam Schwartz Engineering and excited to be part of this team. Um, as you already heard, our first step, um, if you want to go to the next slide, please. Um, has been to review kind of existing conditions, the challenges and opportunities of the transportation network. Um, we know that the metro station and the uh, TOD site is right now prim primarily geared toward private vehicles, but um, our goal for this is to really think about uh, access and connectivity and safety for all modes. So I'd love to hear um, from the group here today um, how you feel about um, you know, getting around University Park, accessing the station, and what opportunities um, you see. Um, so we think we can take advantage of some of the projects that are already in the pipeline, like the um, the multi-use paths and the streetscaping um, around Cicero Avenue, um, possibility of um, improving the different uh, transit options, including uh, pace bus and um, possible employee shuttle services. If you wanna go to the next slide. Um, our next step is to look at three different locations that we've identified as being um, hot spots for crashes um, that um, are that that's primarily along University Parkway at the intersection with the Governor's Highway uh, at Cicero Avenue and then at Central Avenue. So um, Sam Schwartz will be taking a deeper dive of what we could do um, in particular at those locations. So um, that is very high level uh, summary of. Uh, what we've looked at so far for transportation, um, but again, uh, excited for this conversation and happy to answer questions um, uh, throughout the next hour. I want to talk a little bit about the stakeholder engagement that's happened to date. We've heard from a variety of individuals and organizations. We had a long discussion with 
the village uh, administration, the mayor, trustees, um, in terms of getting feedback on, on what the goals and aspirations were for this particular project and what they saw the opportunities to be. So um, that's now being incorporated along with the comments we want to get from the community as, as a whole. And this is part of, this will be an evolving uh, effort throughout the, the planning process. We also spoke with uh, the village of uh, Richton Park they um, and their economic development uh, team there. Uh, they did uh, have a TOD plan uh, in 2018. They had a developer that was online for that. Um, and so you know, some things didn't happen, some things did happen around the station. So um, it was very helpful for us to understand um, those uh, opportunities. So that's, that's also, this is, this is data and uh, that then helps to inform our planning as we think um, forward you know, toward this, this TOD area. Um, we have had a, a number of conversations with the, the transit agencies, Metra, and PACE, uh, we've had some outreach to IDOT to understand what the, the opportunities are from the transportation side of things. That will be continued uh, as part of uh, when we have ideas and um, some improvements that we'd like to float by um, these various uh, agencies. We will have you know, follow-up conversations. We um, have been talking with uh, Governor State University. They are also on our steering committee. Uh, we will have a very focused uh, meeting with them coming up. Um, they are uh, preparing a master plan for their, uh, which is great for us. And so we can tie these things together because they're right adjacent. And, and there's you know, some synergies between what the students need and, and, uh, and how the, the TOD can evolve um, to help support the university's um, needs as well as the village's. Um, in, in addition, we're, you know, we will, we've had a number of conversations with some of the industrial users. We will have a, um, a meeting with them. Uh, the Forest Preserve um, has been represented on our steering committee. We will have a more focused conversation about how we can connect um, the Thorn Creek uh, Forest Preserve um, and maybe pathways, other things. What are they doing today? So, and in, in looking at how that overlap works. Um, and then, you know, home homeowner associations, that's something we're, we're reaching out to. Uh, we've got so identified some of the churches in the community who would be good resources for having conversations about community needs and, and how that could be um, uh, handled uh, with any new development. So, and we do also have a survey, which you're gonna get a link to at the end. We also, you can find that on the uh, Village uh, website as well. Um, and that's, you know, looking at, you know, what the needs are for recreational, uh, retail, um, and, you know, understanding, you know, uh, how do you shop and, and uh, food resources in the area. Um, and then, you know, it also looks at um, issues associated with, um, you know, types of housing um, as well. And we ha did have a business meeting, I think on the 17th of December, um, with your local businesses, and we got a lot of feedback out of that. And then we there was a follow up um, with another community meeting that was done at the golf course. Um, I think within the next week. So then we've got more surveys from that. So that was very helpful. We've got, we've starting to really get a, a good picture on what people's uh, points of view are and what some of the the, the um, priorities are for the community. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to Nick and to uh, Yashashvi, who will run you through our um, exercise uh, associated with uh, some precedents for the site, and you know, see what, where you where your uh, vision is, and would like to get feedback on that. So, yeah. So this is the point where we we transition from the the presentation part, uh, where we're kind of presenting to you what we found. Uh, and now we want to open this up for conversation. This is really where uh, what we're here for today, uh, to get your feedback, to answer your questions, to um, kind of get a sense of, of um, what you see the, the potential is here. Uh, and we wanted to start that off with um, the high level vision and goals. So we started with uh, the chat and thank you for everyone that, that put uh, those three words in the chat. Um, but now we want to expand on that, really have, um, a focused conversation on what the vision and the goals are for this, this station area. And what you see on the screen right now is 
uh, a variety of some of the things that we've heard so far uh, about community, about you know the stationery should foster a sense of community, should kind of uh, provide places for gathering, things like that. Talked a lot about housing and the need for, for more housing in the area, um, the value of Governor State University, uh, as well as businesses uh, and the metro station. We've also heard a lot about um, the future of transportation, about uh, EV charging stations. A lot of this is building off of some of the programs at Governor State University. Um, but there's this idea that this station um, provides a, a huge opportunity to, to leapfrog where the rest of the, the region is at in terms of transportation infrastructure. So that's what we've heard so far. Um, I don't know if anyone has any anything, um, anyone wants to jump in with their vision, their goals, um, and what, what they see of, as the potential and opportunity here. Um, let me just say one thing, Nick, and that is- Yes, uh, please. We are meeting with Metro and we're going to utilize some of the concepts in this as mm -hmm. suggestions for rehab of the metro station because they're rehabbing basically uh, the metro station itself yeah. and its surrounding and the other areas uh, based on needs, current uh, situations, and we're in fact doing the external. So we're trying to piggyback off each other. So I will be sharing this information um, from the TOD development amendment to them. So I wanna mention that. Thank you, Ernestine. That's a, a, a good point that I, uh, that I missed. Yeah, we really wanna take advantage of that investment in the station itself uh, and see what the, the ripple effects could be moving out from the station. Thank you. Um, I know we've been taught, my name is Neva. Hi. I handle our village communications. And I know that we have been talking about, you know, a metro station and um, anchors around the station housing for some time now. Um, but I really kind of see the station somewhat like uh, the, the interactions that happen in downtown Flossmoor, um, where it's just a, uh, like a beehive of things that go on there. One of the things that I know it doesn't sound like it would be appropriate for a metro station would be some type of, not necessarily an amphitheater, but some type of round or a square of some sort sure. that maybe stone um, concrete steps that people could sit there so that Governor State University could highlight whatever theatrical thing that's going on there. Maybe people can get a highlight in meet in the square. Uh, Crete Moni School District could do something where we could meet in the square as well as any other um, local, I mean, uh, college uh, gatherings that involve music and things like that. So it is transportation, but it allows, you know, us to gather not just for tra transporting ourselves back and forth, but allow us to gather and enjoy, you know, music and a coffee or things of that nature. I, I love that idea of connecting out to all the, the local schools uh, and providing a place for them to, to be here and to kind of have a presence. Um, that's a really great idea. Uh, Nick, let me say again that that's something that our engineers have um, actually been planning conceptually. They provided for us conceptually some concepts for the development of TLD. Even okay. though uh, we aren't talking about stone, but that is a good idea. They're talking about um, uh, restaurants. Uh, it's not restaurants as such. Fast mm -hmm. foods, coffee shops, uh, possibly some semblance of uh, housing. Uh, for that area. There are a lot of uh, senior students that attend Governor State. And if you know anything about the origin and the development of Governor State, that was why uh, it, it was initially a two-year university. And generally, it was those people that had already um, completed uh, some years and it was an upper level university, so the older students. But bottom line is that uh, what we were looking at would be 
what would enhance those folks using transportation systems, the inclusion of, I'm sure we're gonna to get to later in this presentation, other mm -hmm. transportations like um, uh, the buses, uh, the quick coffee sips before they get on the train and any other kind of thing. So that's all inclusive. And um, you're gonna be discussing that later. I just wanted to bring that out with Ms. Jenkins to let her know. And then uh, rather than theater, it would be, I think, something great if we could have um, gathering areas in particular uh, for that. But in terms of theater, we definitely do not want to deal with a conflict of interest with Governor's State because as part of their plan, uh, Will Davis will further explain to this committee uh, their outdoor theater uh, dealing with right now, they have a very good indoor theater. So we want to make sure that um, we focus on an area for that. But the idea of what Ms. Jenkins said about a gathering place, I wouldn't know how or what, but I think it's a great idea. We need to consider this uh, as a gathering place. And then there are a lot of people in town that do not use public transportation and they may change their minds uh, that was mentioned by a trustee, if they in fact are exposed to such a nice system, they may decide no more to drive, but rather park and ride. I love that idea too. I'm gonna make sure I get this down, uh, that we can use this development to change people's minds about how they, they use transit. Um, that's, that's great. Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, my name is Ed Bradley, and I'm a resident of University Park. And I would I just wanted to touch on some of the security aspects of uh, the train station, and also the the fact that uh, it might have been mentioned in in some of your meetings, or maybe not. This is since this is the end of the line. Uh, you know, we have people coming as far as from the Kankakee region, and also Indiana on a daily basis. They come over here and catch the train and go to downtown Chicago to work. Mm -hmm. And also when Chicago, downtown Chicago or any other areas of Chicago have major events, they also come over here to catch the train to go to concerts at Millennium Park or baseball games or, or different sure. things like that that are going on. So it's not just, a, I don't want it to be thought of just as a you know, people catching the train to go to work every day because it's used for multiple things and we, it, it could be uh, loaded on any given weekend during the summer. So please take that into account. And also uh, when they're developing it, will there be any vendor areas in the station area, the tunnels or somewhere? Mm -hmm. And I ask that because I'd like to see also a, uh, a security aspect in that, maybe a, a, a cubby hole for security or police officer when we need them down there at a certain time. Um, of course, the lighting and security cameras. And uh, another major security aspect is on the east side, we have multiple exits and entry, or no, on the west side. But on the east side, I think it's uh, really a major uh, problem having one entry and exit point on the east side for that part of the station. And we really need to, and if you have a major disaster or uh, incident, that mm -hmm. could be a, a big problem. It could be a really big problem and uh, people could get hurt. So we need to keep that in mind and, and also have a another uh, alternate, uh, whether it's a horseshoe or, or whatever, uh, way for you know it, it doesn't have to be even open all the time but if in case of the emergency we can open sure. it up so we have another way for people to get out of the parking lot on that uh east side of the uh you know where we have parking in there uh, things like that so uh those are just some some aspects that i wanted to bring up you know uh that light uh, where the exit is for governor state I don't know what's going on with the with the property over there, the farmland and everything, but that would be a good where the second exit could be if it if it came around there and people could get it, get out right there. We already have a light there and everything. And that's just a thought. 
So I, I just wanted to part that uh, those thoughts on you guys. No, thanks. And those are those are great points, uh, both about the the security and the the need to accommodate that that weekend traffic or that non workday traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a huge potential. So yes. thank you. Anyone else? Any other thoughts? Uh, this is Trustee Bolding. I saw a Roosevelt name pop up. Did you want to say something, Roosevelt? Maybe you just put a comment in. Okay. A mecca of the Southland. I love that. Um, I see. A, I see a hand up. The uh, Star Lawson. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I wanted to speak to the um, where you have the community stakeholders, um, mm -hmm. or or just the stakeholders, but uh, primarily community participation, and how. Um, well, first of all, let me say I do uh, appreciate this this initial draft of this plan, mm -hmm. and. Um, I would like to really see uh, a strategy as a component of this work plan uh, to prepare the public to participate, the, the taxpayers in University Park. Um, they're, they're, I, I don't think uh, enough work uh, or preparation went into it to get people to be involved uh, at this stage. And certainly we weren't uh, uh, involved prior uh, mm -hmm. because those stakeholders, I didn't see that they included the taxpayers of University Park and correct me if I'm wrong and maybe you can point that out to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would yeah. like to see that community participation uh, the general timing of community participation activities relative to the steps uh, that you're creating for this community plan, uh, that, that you should really make that happen because we are the taxpayers. And to uh, put together all of this without any input from your, st from your number one stakeholders which are the taxpayers in this community um, would be very dismissive. Yeah, no, so, no, that's, well, go ahead. Yeah, and, and I just want to um, just reiterate our, where we are in the process. Um, right. So this is our first community meeting and we have two community meetings that are just to gather information and ideas from the community at large. Um, and so, was it was it Evelyn? Is that that your star? Um, but if we could, you know, if you could get some of your, you know, neighbors or other residents that you um, feel would like to be part of this, maybe they can come to the Wednesday night one on the thirtieth of March, because you know this this is the this is the first time that we're asking for input. Mm -hmm. um, and part of our process is to do, you know, some research and get information. So we share information with you, but we are not talking about, we're, there's no definitive ideas here. It's mostly, we're, it's a listening session. That's our goal today. Oh, yeah. um, and, and so, and then we will have two other community meetings, each one about six weeks apart. Um, and the hope we're hoping the next one, we can make an in-person meeting so we can, have everyone show up in a room. We can, you know, work on maps. We can talk about different ideas for the, the station. We can share, you know, information about housing types and, and uh, retail types and things like that and get a lot more interactive. It's always difficult, I feel like, with the, you know, the Zoom and the, you know, the, the computers is that it just, it, there seems to be, a, there's a little, sometimes more distance with that. But, but we are, we are very excited about talking to the, the community at large, the, the taxpayers, the, the people who live here. So um, if you can um, help us share the word for next Wednesday, it's this exact yeah. same meeting as this one, so. Yeah, yeah and to reiterate okay. that, I mean, we're well aware that 
Uh, the only way this plan is going to succeed is if there is a robust community engagement throughout the process. Absolutely. Um, like we can't do that. We can't create a successful plan without that. And so we're committed to, to doing whatever it takes to make that happen. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I think we need to, to keep moving. Um, I think the next one we wanted to talk about, and one of the participants started to talk about this was to look at the site and look at uh, some of the connections to the site. Um, and so you can see on the left-hand side, a, a larger map that includes things like the Thorn Creek Wood Nature Preserve, things like the town center, uh, as well as the Governor's Highway and, and Stunkel Road. Um, and then the on the right, it zooms in a little bit more and looks at almost um, individual spots that we could connect to the site. And so I think the question here is, you know, what should we be trying to incorporate uh, in this site? What should we be connecting to um, in terms of, of this development? What are some of the potentials? Um, so any thoughts on that? Don't all jump at once. How do you feel about Thorn Creek? Do you think that could connect to this area in terms of the, the forest preserve? Do you, you guys like to walk in there? Are the pathways, you know, are they they're easy to access now? How how do you see that? Um, um, let, let me say this, Christy. Um, Thornwood Creek, like all of the other kinds of creek right now adjacent to these communities, they're in fact doing just that. If you look, uh, south suburban communities, especially Chicago Heights area, mm -hmm. the south, they're all doing this. They're merging into it. But Thorn Creek, um, uh, we'd have to really see and determine how that segue will, could actually be a part of this because this TLD has the major um, tracks going almost parallel to governors um, until it cuts. We'd have to really, uh, well, you would have to really look at that to see how we can incorporate that because as of right now, we have a side path that we received uh, funding for that's actually slightly, it's actually it is, it's a part of this TOD plan. So mm -hmm. trying to incorporate uh, a walking area, you'd have to somehow incorporate uh, the south side of University Parkway from Stager Mon Moni Road coming eastward uh, on the south side of University Parkway curving, possibly uh, coming all the way north to University Park Stager to Stunkel Road, University Park Stunkel Road uh, on the north side uh, because the south side is polarized by Governor State. So we'd have to do on the north side in front of that agricultural space to connect it. So, or if you're gonna even because it, to, to, to make it very clear, when you're using University Parkway uh, uh, coming eastward, I mean, coming westward with Stager, Moni Road on University Parkway, on the east side of University Parkway there, uh, you have the uh, Thornwood Creek, you have Thorn Creek there. So mm -hmm. the question is um, how you would, slightly bring that in or at what point it would in other words it's going to take somebody some time to can try I, to figure I, out how that will work because i'm visually trying to picture how it will work you may have to take a pause in there if you do it and you're going to have to be confronted with some traffic or the interruption from the traffic to do this so to sure. do this may be a little more difficult than than you think so we may have to consider utilizing the current side path direction or development that we're proposing that will combine and get you to the industrial park 
on the west side of town because right now between Governor's Highway and Cicero on both sides, the east and the west, there are no sidewalks. And so a path, a walking path, this will enhance that unless we can convince Carvana to put a mega sidewalk in the village's public right away. But anyway, that's so no, those are all great. Those are all great points. And one of the things that we will look at is, you know, where the priorities are for those connection points, maybe some phasing, maybe some opportunities as you think about you know, the years ahead um, and to build that network. OK, Eddie, you've got your hand raised yeah. literally. So let's, uh, I'll let you go. <laughs> well, yeah, I thought that was the way to do it. But um, yeah. I was going to suggest, uh, I think someone mentioned earlier that the Will County Forest Reserve was a partner mm -hmm. with it in some kind of capacity. So mm -hmm. I was gonna suggest that this is something that we could relegate to them. They specialize in this and see what their ideas are. I'm sure they can yep. come up with the best answers for us, especially if we're gonna uh, be talking about involving Thorn Creek. Uh, I, I would suggest that we, uh, this is something we could relegate to them and, and see what they come up with. And I think that would be the best, uh, best route for this. That's great. And our goal today is to understand where the community's preferences are. So that's why we want to know what do you want to connect? I mean, there's Governor State University, there's Thorn Creek, there's the Industrial Park. It seems like those are the things we're hearing so far. Is there something else? Sure. And another thing I want to mention to um, Nick and Christine is in back of the town center, you there's the open, big open area of Thorn Creek. If somehow you could consider some kind of connection there um, in back, they're, they're gonna have to do something and that it, it's gonna take some years, but it's a thought mm -hmm. because yep. they're gonna have to do a lot of clearance in the back. And then there are a lot of water issues in the back. So they're gonna, maybe if you mentioned to them, because they're always asking for ideas, it's going to take them some years to do it. Maybe 22 may be the year they start this. It may take them, it may be a part of a 10, 20, 30 year plan, but at least the concept uh, from the village will be forthcoming. Yeah, that could be pretty amazing if you could have a bike trail that can get you across from the town center to mm -hmm. the train station. Yeah. Yeah, think about that. So, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, on that note, Christine, this is Curtis from Antero. Um, yeah. So just for the for the group's uh, information here, we there is a plan to create that connection between the the side path. Here, I'm going to pull up the map so I can re refer to that. Yeah, a side path that connects to the existing segment that ends at Cicero Avenue and U University Parkway. Mm -hmm. um, that would be connected. It would run on the north side of University Parkway and then jog north on Governor's Highway and connect to the metro station. So that engineering for that trail extension is in progress. And we're also um, working on finding the funding to construct that segment. Um, then there's an existing segment on the north side of GSU's campus on the south side of University Parkway that goes to, I guess, where Crawford you know, the intersection of right, UP right. And, and Crawford. Mm -hmm. And then there's this gap. Um, and there used to be a trail there. Um, but we're, we're also, the, the village was awarded funding for the engineering of the tr extending the trail from where it dead ends by GSU to where it was just rebuilt by the town center. Um, so I guess the, the, the moral or the takeaway here is that there, that is a, uh, a plan or like the, creating that cross town connection is a plan and we're um, moving forward with move, um, building out those gaps in the, the network. Okay, right. fantastic. So we, we appreciate the, the clarity in which you brought to that in terms of what the, 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 what the engineering, what stage it's at. And this is something that also the plan will then capture as well so that we can you know, help mm -hmm. to support that on the, community information side of things too. So I think, um, I mean, we're running a, a little bit over, um, mm -hmm. but um, I think, I mean, this is great. We can stay as long as, as um, people wanna stay on and keep giving us feedback, uh, but I was hoping to move to the, to the next section. I think, um, Shasvi, if you wanted to tell people or I can um, 
kind of get going. Uh, we're going to have a poll. So we're going to show some photos of different types of uh, development. Uh, and then we're going to issue a poll on the screen. And so if you can just vote for your, your favorite uh, images, um, it'll be asking you the types of retail development or the types of housing um, that we're going to be, uh, that we should look at for incorporating into the site. It's mostly just about look and feel of, of this type of development. Uh, it kind of helps us envision what, what you have in your minds in terms of this uh, university park. So uh, you'll see polls pop up and if you just fill it out and hit submit, um, it should be, should be a fun little voting exercise. And then we'll look at the, the results uh, right after. So, it'll be fun. so, and I also just want, if you want to move the poll, sometimes it lands in the center of the images um, <laughs> just randomly. So you can, you can actually just use it, you know, use your um, mouse and move it over if you can do that. So here you can see uh, various types of um, uh, entrances. Uh, so you can see one's you know, kind of like a boulevard, uh, some more town squarish, you know, other types of retail. And so um, if you want to take a moment, uh, look at these different images. Um, do you have any questions? Or, um, oh, we'll leave it open for a second. How did you say that we can look at the picture and the poll? Because the poll page is in the middle. Yeah. So, so if, do you have a do you have a mouse? Are you on a computer? Or yes. Can you, you can just click on the poll and then okay. and then drag it. Just move it over. It moves. It, it kind of floats there. Is that working for you? No. Oh. So towards the the top edge. Yeah, where it says polls, actually. Click on that. Ah, got yeah. it. Thank Did you. Did you click and drag? Yeah. Yeah, I got it now. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think everybody ready for the results? You're on mute. There we go. So it looks like, it's like we got a three-way tie between. They should be, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. it's fun, right? Uh, yeah, it between two, five, and seven with uh, six and four right behind, right? So two, nice, nice. Five, you got plenty of people. This looks like kind of a farmer's market type atmosphere. Uh, any comments, uh, just real quick, on why people chose this? Anything that really stood out? Boulevard is generally a closed in kind of feature or that's limited with, uh, breathtaking whatever. I chose, a, for example, a number two because of there are the buildings, uh, there's a park concept in the meeting. A boulevard, sure. a number one wouldn't be a boulevard because there's nothing really interesting. You come in and you go down the street, you find out where you're going and you park. Uh, yeah. So it's it's different. Now you're gonna come up with some more interesting ones down the line and uh, you'll find out. So that's 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 for example. And and that's number number seven. Hmm. Yeah, number seven's great, right? It has all that activity in the center. Yeah, that that's that mixed use development and that also kind of ties hand in hand with Governor State's vision. Mm -hmm. So we get to to, to oh yeah, but it's good. Retail, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we try the next one? Yeah. All right. So this one's looking at uh, specifically the retail environment. If, if the other was about site entrance and, and open space, this one's very focused on the type of retail. Um, so you can see we have. Um, some different types of retail. One's a little more street oriented, like number one. Others are more entertainment. So, okay. Everyone. 
good or should we should we give it another second? Well, this is fantastic. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have the vision, make the plan, and work the plan. Yep. All right. We have the results, Yashasvi. Mm -hmm. Everyone's on the edge of their seat. Just, I'm just waiting for like a few more seconds. I think I'm <laughs> getting inputs. You're still getting in, but <laughs> just in case. Just in case. <laughs> yeah, while well, while everyone's voting, and just in case people have to drop off, I did want to express how yeah. how uh, how much we appreciate everyone being here, taking the time. Um, this is really important um, for the process and for us, and so um, we really appreciate it. I got to jump off here, but I appreciate yeah. um, this meeting and I really like the interaction with the, the images. I think that was, you guys did a really nice job with this. So thank you for facilitating this. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Curtis. We'll be in touch. I'll see you later. Bye guys. Thanks. Thanks. Talk, I'll see you soon, Mayor. I'm, I'm coming down. Okay. <laughs> I'll be in UP this afternoon. All right. Bye guys. All right. Bye. All right, it looks like we got number three was the, the winner on this one, but this one's also pretty pretty evenly split. Lots of uh, that's nice. differing of opinions. Yeah, any comments? It's, it's, it's nice. Well, I chose number three because it, it uh, really does give that community vibe. <laughs> you uh, like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree with uh, uh, Evangelist Star. Uh, three gives that you know, that fountain feel, you know how kids okay. like yeah. they'll change in. I like three too, that retail and community. That's mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. one I picked as well. It's, I yeah. actually picked, I actually picked, I couldn't decide between two or three, two and three. But I think <laughs> that either one is good because it makes us, it brings, it also helps brings people to our community since it'll be closer to the expressway. Yes, and that's yeah. a and I know that's a concern with people like coming to University Park because it's in town is so there's you know we're not as close to the expressway we're about a ten minute drive so this also is something that would help oh, yeah. bring you know businesses and, and and other people into our community because it's mm -hmm. accessible it's not far off the the interstate yes and it, it, it makes it, it, makes it a destination station and, and guys just make make sure this time there's going to be so much traffic, so, so such an influx of people coming mm -hmm. in and commuting from other areas to the Carvana site, to the Ryerson and Steel site. So it's going to become a destination station as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yeah. You all, let me just say this. I was just waiting on everybody. I think right. it could be all of them. It's all of them. It depends on where we decide to locate it. On the side mm -hmm. of it, yes. So it could be every one of these. Number one is a main street mm -hmm. for those communities that don't have the population. Number two, you see things like this in Charlotte, North Carolina, because mm -hmm. of the type of differences in people. Number three will be a location like a strip shopping mall in Aurora. Number four is something you find in uh, the urban areas of LA. So all I'm trying to say is depending on our Funding sources, depending on a proposed developers, uh, I would say all of them. If I were to I, whatever, who comes first to the table with a good deal to get something to the citizens of this town? Number three will be and region. You know. Yes, this will be a regional station, mm -hmm. oh. but it's going to benefit the residents better than anyone and the university. Yeah. Absolutely. I like the way you think, Ernestine. I'll just add that from the RTA's perspective, it's it's nice to see that um, the preferences of our participants today are really walkable environments that uh, are not car centric. Uh, you know, we're we're encouraged by that, most definitely. Awesome, Robert. Good. Yeah. All right, let's keep moving. Yeah. We got a lot. We got a, a lot packed in here, so this is uh, this is great. This is great. 
So the next one is about um, what we're calling community programming. So this is oh. the types of activities that would that would be in these spaces. So you see anything from kids' playgrounds to uh, activated sidewalks or nature paths. Um, all of them, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's cheating, that's cheating. <laughs> Yo, the active sidewalks are phenomenal. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Combination of the old and the new, that makes it a win-win. Yeah, I agree. The activity plaza is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The markets, farmers markets, as we spoke of before, all kinds of different fairs and everything, flea markets, yeah. right? Yeah. Playscapes, it's a family oriented thing. Now you can bring your kids along with you when you go shopping, when you go into the metro station, give them, them an experience. <laughs> Not just your average um, metro station. Uh, let me just say this, and I don't want to influence anybody, but because mm -hmm. I've already done my commission, but um, the Tinley Park metro station uh, really encompasses. Mm -hmm. uh, the number four, the number five, the, uh, the we can have uh, the number three. It does yeah, number, number three. three. Well, the Grange Road and number two reminds me of the area in back of Regal Farm with the Com Ed space uh, biking path. I mean, all of these are just wonderful. We can, especially a farmers market in the TOD, would be a hit. A regional mm -hmm. draw. I got to jump off for a yeah. minute. I'll jump back in. Would be a super yeah. hit. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. All right. I should, should I end the result? Yes, we so. should. Yeah. We, we, we need to move on. Let's keep moving. <laughs> All right. So it looks like active sidewalks um, are pretty popular. I didn't say for good reason. Uh, but a nice kind of balance of um, results. So it looks like we got another all of them type of uh, answer, right? I think we, we, we addressed a fair amount of comments and unless there's uh, any other specific comments, I think we should keep moving. Uh, well, I just wanna say we very quickly, we need to be very cautious about so we're talking about the, the uh, TOD area now. We need to be very mm -hmm. cautious about the play space. You know, very cautious about that. Yes. Uh, with the traffic, the cars, and we have some very independent and thinking mind parents that may allow their children to play by themselves. But in an environment like this, where you have cars, and uh, I would have my grandchildren. I'd be like a, a piece of glue or something. I would mm -hmm. be hanging on to so we just I just thought about uh, whoever came up with the sidewalk activity area. I, I think that's a great one. Those are super great. That was super great. Good so, point. Uh, Ernestine, in uh, in terms of the play spaces, that could be maybe more tied to a residential edge yeah. or part of the residential neighborhood. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in the center of the drop-off zone. So we would definitely be no, mindful I was of that. The, I was thinking about the boundaries of our proposed TOD. It's about a quarter right. of a mile in circumference. And mm -hmm. I was looking at the residential area around it. It's not mm -hmm. very much. And see the people that are selecting this probably didn't really understand the um, the, the limits of or the boundaries of the TOD, and mm -hmm. that's the only reason I made that comment. But it's a good point. I mean, it's always it always comes up when we look at things like daycares and, and playgrounds. Is they need to be appropriately located. And uh, now, if you had been a daycare playground. That would have been a horse with a different color. <laughs> uh, is that good or bad from your perspective for the TOD area? Uh, yeah, I think uh, some people like it when you can drop your kids off, even though there is a daycare right there at the mm -hmm. end, at the southern end, mm -hmm. or the end of uh, a Stunkle Road. There is a daycare there. We may try to enhance some of their features or talk with them. Maybe we could talk with them. That may be one of the 
the inventory kinds of lessons you sure. need to move with it. Talk with yeah. it. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, this is Keely. Uh, another thing that we also have to look at, not only uh, K through fifth grade, because that's majority of when people are doing daycare, but you have to look at the the sixth through eighth grade, the children that are left home alone. So that model that you just put up needs to be um, mid teenage friendly. Uh, so that way, when the parents are dropping off, they have a, a teen zone or something that will parents will be comfortable, drop them off, then get on the train and then the, um, a bus will pick them up to take them to school. But we have to look at the new era of these uh, preteens and mm -hmm. giving them a safe space instead of being home alone. Agreed. Yes. Thank you. That's a, You're a, a good point. Yeah. All right, should we keep, um, keep moving? Now we're gonna jump into to housing um, and specifically for this first one, uh, mixed use housing. Um, and so again, we'll, we'll pop up the polls. We've, uh, these examples primarily look at housing above retail. So this would be ground floor retail um with housing above and you can see we, we've selected a couple different scales here um and so just want to consider that when you're when you're voting and this is linda um just saying it, it the ground floor could be commercial it could be services as well as retail depending on um, um what makes sense yeah good point linda thank you department of radiology <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah or an urgent care if you need Department of Radiology. Okay. <laughs> Actually, one of the um, the retail brokers I um, do research with a lot um, talks about Medtail, medical office space in um, ground floor commercial uses that are often retail. He calls Medtail. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a need. I mean, that's kind of everywhere. How are the results looking, Shansu? There you go. All right, exciting. Uh, so it looks like we got, yeah, one uh, nice even, even distribution again. Um, with one and three being the, the favorites just by a, by a hair. Any comments other than what uh, just covered? Good morning, may I jump in right quick? This is Deb course, Stroud, how's course. everyone? Yeah. I'm looking at number one, the mm -hmm. feasibility of parking, as opposed to, am I looking at three as a limitation and two as not a lot of parking area? Um, I would say no. I mean, these were, were more focused on the retail and, and housing. Um, there are various okay, the options. Yeah, there, we okay. have options for, for parking. Um, obviously integrated parking or you can do parking behind or um, things like that. Parking strategies would be something separate. Um, this was more focused on the, the building and the development. Okay. Then yeah, three, three, I'm all for it. All right, all right. But I think your point is a good one about, um, this is not just about pedestrian access and bicycle and other connections, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're, um, you know, if you're bringing something, a package out with you, it may be that um, cars are important to retailers. <laughs> well, a big concern being in that class of the ADA, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. that's a lot of consideration when you're talking about getting back and forth to uh, any type of building. And 
accessibility is everything for somebody. Once they pull that, that put that placard on their mirror, they want to be able to, to get right to the location and leave from that location. Not a lot of walking. And you also have to concern with those that are in, uh, in uh, wheelchairs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, we want this development to be accessible for everyone. So well, it's got to be accessible. Yeah, it's got to be accessible year round. Mm -hmm. You know, wintertime with the wheelchair. That's a, that's a, a story that, like they say, you know, walk yeah. in my shoes. If you roll on those wheels, you'll know that uh, accessibility is a key point. So. And it is for also for Metra and for, you know, uh, PACE and all the transit agencies. So um, one of the things that we do is we really look at the kind of uh, overall mobility for the whole area. Okay. Any other comments or should we, should we move on? Look at some more housing. So this one, we're looking at um, multifamily housing. So this would be multiple units in the same building. Um, no, no retail in this one. This is just um, basically housing apartments. So and take a look at the, the various styles and, and approaches. Give us your thoughts. Again, this would be uh, in and around the station. So. I always like these types of exercises because I never know how people are going to react to it. So it's always, <laughs> uh, I always learn something uh, whenever I. I I see something through someone else's eyes. We'll give it a few more seconds and then I'll share the results. May I ask for number two, the <laughs> three items are those columns statues lighting what are, what is the three white items there good question that's uh, art in the front but you can maybe yeah, you can zoom in yeah so, Shasta, if you want to zoom in if you could zoom into that so that she can see it better yeah. maybe that might be helpful i think it's part of the fencing and sign okay in front of that um, thank you yeah it's just sort of how they chose to to design it just a second. Can you see the results? Uh, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So here's the picture four was a, was a clear winner for this one. Any I have some on comments to make, to make when you start the comment. And I'll look comments are wide open. Go for it. Number four, that concept is widely used in TOD area. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's, uh, it has agricultural, um, it, it has the semblance of, it's noticeable. It enhances TOD areas, it's mm -hmm. multicolor, and it's brick, it's strength, it's strong. And it has provisions for biking, if someone <laughs> lives there, yeah. uh, they don't always have to have a car. They can put their bikes right there and go across the street to Governor State University and go to a class, come back, park, or go downtown when it's town time for them to uh, work. It limits uh, the need for always having vehicles. There's still a lot of people in this company, in this country, that don't drive. This okay. type of uh, location would be great. Number three is more in residential multifamily areas. And we, mm -hmm. we don't want to 
someone mentioned earlier about security. We need to leave that there. You know, uh, number one reminds you of the south side of Chicago. It's great, but for a TOD area for transportation, uh, uh, this development, it needs to be more updated. So number four would be a good section. Number two is more of a, an area, um, you got art out. So you're leaving that open at night, yet you have people that are catching the trains at night. Somebody may decide that they want that in their yard and they pick it up, put it in their van and go. We have to be real in 2022. We have to be real. And so uh, number four is, is the option. That's like my it. opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> Lizzie, uh, I definitely agree with your explanation on one, two, three, where four, it provides such, such. Um, it's an opening for some of any and everything to occur. Right. Whereas number one, box. that reminds me of University of Chicago area. Um, mm -hmm. It's somewhat stoic. Mm -hmm. And number two, I don't know, I was kind of debating until I heard your conversation. So I think you gravitated me more towards four, but three, uh, that should stay in a residential area in my, in, in my opinion. So that's two votes for number four. <laughs> All right, let me just capture this and unless there's any other comments, we'll keep moving. Yeah. All right, this next one again, looks at residential. Um, there's a lot of types of residential. We, we see this as a, a prime opportunity for the site. So that's why we're asking so many questions. Um, this one specifically looks at townhomes. So these are um, single family, but attached uh, housing. Um, again, various different styles and approaches to, to how that's structured and accomplished. So to take a moment to look at these and let us know what you think. And then just for those keeping score, we have one more question after this. So I know we're, we're over time. And, and again, I want to express how, how appreciative we are of your time. Eddie, you rose your hand. Did you want to make I a comment? I want to make a point while uh, <laughs> everyone was looking at those pictures uh, about the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather that I think everybody would agree that we keep in mind that we, we don't want narrow streets. Uh, it probably doesn't need to be said, but maybe it does need to be said. Uh, we don't want narrow streets where, you know, people are having a hard time navigating up and down the street when there's traffic or something like that. We like to have uh, the street to be, you know, convenient uh, to the uh, amount of traffic that we're going to have, uh, to the amount of housing and foot traffic and car traffic and whatever else traffic, you know, if we're going to have buses on those streets. We don't want to have narrow streets where, you know, we're having a hard time navigating those streets or our, our young drivers are having a hard time navigating those streets. We like the appropriate, appropriately, uh, you know, wide streets for whatever uh, everybody picks out. Okay, good point. And that's why um, we do have, uh, that's, that's what Sam Schwartz does. I know Holly had to drop off because of a prior it's commitment, but. Um, that's their involvement here is to, to balance everything from those buses to the cars, the amount of traffic to, you know, bicycle lanes and, and pedestrians. Sure. So, um, but it's a, a good reminder. So thank you. All right. Um, Number two, remind me of Hyde Park, Christine. Remember the other day you had uh, it is Ernestine. I we went, I went digging around to find those townhouses. That's what we found. We were looking at that on uh, Google Earth, but we've got a nice shot of them. So that is that is the, 
the development you had referred to. So um, and just for everyone's understanding, Ernestine had identified an area in Hyde Park it was probably built in the 70s and 80s and it had a series of little open spaces associated with these townhouses that you see there in kind of that yellow brick. Um, and it's very, it's very nicely sort of designed from the standpoint of how the neighborhood feels and the streetscape feels, which you can't really see from this image, but it's, and we'll have I, that as one of our precedents and when we go to the next step. <laughs> number four is cosmetically pleasing, very cosmetically pleasing. <laughs> and it has the, the security right there that you'd have to be a uh, mini version of a Batman if you jump over it. So the security is there. But my concern is somebody living on the second floor. Uh, you know, that's why I went so with that commercial on the first floor. And I look at number two because you look at number two and there are like security, there's a split level. And then upstairs is like a bay window for the homeowner in of their own living spaces. Uh, of course, ours would look better because it would be new and the security for those in number two, but number one and three are out the question. I mean, they, they're more in tune for residential area as an area rather than a TOD area. Number two is a townhome. Number four is a multifamily unit, kind of. People it's a townhome know. also. Number four is townhomes or side by side. Oh, uh, no, no. When I think of townhomes, oh. I think of a second floor. Like this, there's the same window pattern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Number two is more versatile. It really mm -hmm. looks like a uh, single family versus mm -hmm. uh, that. Okay. Shall we move on to the last question? Any other comments? All right, going once, going twice. All right, so our final question of the day is um, addressing single family housing. Uh, now this is something, I think the conversation hasn't really gone there today, but uh, we wanna make sure we cover it um, just, uh, just to make sure we cover all of our bases. So we have these three different types of single family housing. Um, and, and as always, take a look and uh, think about it and, and let us know your thoughts. Are we done? I think so. Yeah. Shasti? Yeah. Just uh -huh. a moment. Well, the village does, in fact, have the number two. And I think they're, where they're located, the areas look great. I mean, seriously, look great. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just looking, too, at our uh, recent census information, there tend to be more um, younger folk in town um, than the older folk, but I'm looking at even the young folk nowadays uh, to get from a walk-in from the number one, a walk-in uh, on the first floor to a second and a third floor. That's going up, the, up and down the stairs a lot how feasible it would be in people purchasing those or a number three, which has more of an aesthetic look to it, it the entire area that's de developed, you'd have to have conducive to similar kinds of houses. But the number two 
Um, I don't know. Uh, it's a it's a personal choice. To me, that's a university park, considering the basis for its income levels. I don't know. I, you know, I would probably convey this to community folks in terms of what they look at. But the university park, university park to me is a it's a wonderful community, and I look at number two and. Uh, it's more conducive to this community, if you ask me. Uh, okay. Ms. Lawson, yeah. Ms. Strau, or everybody else, who, whoever uh, would, would probably, as the community, would respond to which type of single family housing is appropriate. So I have a, I have a question. I have a question for the, the group here on one thing that's very different about each one of them is the the driveway, the, how the parking works, and you know, where number one has a driveway beside the building. Um, the number two has a big driveway that comes into a double car garage. Number three has uh, a garage in the back off of an alley. And I'm just kind of curious as to, you know, how people feel about those types of conditions. If we have a small group what, now, wouldn't it kind of, wouldn't it kind of determine on the the retail site because you would want something to go along with the retail site so you don't want anything that really is more modern and then you have a say a uh, single family house like number three we, we do have it. 77 to acres in this area so there are opportunities for different kinds of housing within different zones of it so you might have a retail zone that is more urban type housing you might have single family probably further away from the TOD, but within the 77 acres. So that's I mean, it's sort of strategy for the site, but that, you know, we're not saying that this is a must have in any way. It was just, you know, you don't necessarily have to think about the retail in combination with single family. And I think that in addition to having different styles and density of housing, there are gonna be different price points as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Christine, how is the drive accessed from number one picture? Is that from the front or rear? It's it's a side drive, so you can see there side drives. Okay. And somehow the gray the the building we see in the center is actually looks like they maneuvered and did something a little differently. But that was it. Just has a wider lot, you know. So you have this the house right. on one side, and then you have the the drive through, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm looking at once they get out of the car. Uh, there's, there's a place to park in the back. You can see this little garage back there. Okay, now I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And that's how th this particular block was developed. And, you know, I just, um, but you know, some people really want that two car garage right out front and they, you know, they want to drive right in and be able to have that. The two car gives a, a an enhancement of beauty. Um, you know, you're driving right up, you're, you're going into the house, you're not exposed to any element. Um, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. yeah, from the convenience side, yes, definitely. So I mean, yeah. and one of the things that we'll be looking at is it's not one size fits all, it's gonna be a variety of, of housing mm -hmm. types um, to make sure that we can cover that, um, but it, it really starts with in the planning side with the parcel. <laughs> how big well, is it? How does it organize? Things like that. So that understanding the strategy for parking is one of the things that kind of starts to drive. Yeah, I was going to say plan. most developers, they always come with a minimum of four to six different plans course, for any yeah. type of mm -hmm. uh, house similar to number two. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Number one, Absolutely. I wonder if you took your photos from Park Forest area. <laughs> number three reminds me more of a lot of uh frankfurt area oh frankfurt okay. mokina yeah yeah but number, number two, three look like uh looks like chicago to me that's not how it is okay. Wabash. <laughs> right mm -hmm. Wabash and 22nd street you're right <laughs> that's true or, or high okay park. now that you mentioned the area but number two i guess i'm kind of stuck on number two being up area Okay. UP housing. Oh. And okay. um and, oh. in the Matson area, um over by the Matson train station, it looks like number three. 
those homes over there look like number three as well. That's true, Star. And number one also looks like the new um, single um, development they have on Vomer and Cicero. Mm. They have some like that. But my concern, uh, is that is that a um, a garage in the back of number one? Yeah. yeah, 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 Okay, because you know, right now, 2022, we just as a as a female, we would love to have a garage that's connected, versus mm -hmm. having to walk mm -hmm. after you park and then walk into your home. So, is there any way possible if that one could be like a connection to the house? Yeah, anything's possible. We're just trying to okay. understand what the size and the plate of the of the buildings would be because we're we're not necessarily going to do the the developer's plan. We're going to put in recommendations for it. So understanding, you know, how th these might be larger lots because we're going to have a wider frontage to accommodate a garage. That sort of helps us look at that building type to be able to yeah. accommodate it on the site. Okay, but as Thank somebody you. had said in your the. There are, they're usually, you know, every developer has six or so um, prototypes out there. So that's part of, you know, that will be the next phase of it. Okay. Okay. Any other comments before? That was our last one. I think, um, yeah, I think we've had plenty of conversation and I think we're, we're way over time. Yeah, we um, are. So it's time to kind of wrap it up. Yeah. And... Um, when yeah, is the next so, meeting? I'm sorry. Okay. So, so go ahead. Go ahead, Christine. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Nick. Oh, I was going to say the next meeting, thank you for asking, uh, will be hopefully in person. Uh, we haven't scheduled the exact time or date yet, but it will be in uh, later May. Um, and okay. so we'll okay. definitely reach out to everyone, uh, have it on all the um, city's websites, social media. Um, and so, so that'll be the next uh, community meeting. Uh, we try to, next round. yeah, we try to push it out about six weeks between our meetings. So that way you know, we have time to collect all the feedback and then we can yeah. put together some strategies and bring them forward to you and we, have, we can advertise for it and things like that. Um, um, my last sure. question, me being the director of uh, community relations, yeah. I know we were doing the process of the, um, the surveys, but do you have anything that we need to begin to send out to residents so they know what the expectations are and how we can assist them? Oh, this is it. Is this sure. the same one that we sent out in December? No, it's no. been refined. Okay. Yeah, is there it's similar? Any? It's similar, but it's, it's, um, it's got, it, it has a little more detail on transit usage. Um, uh, a needs analysis for types of um, retails, a little finer grain um, yep. than the original one we put out there. So, um, and so okay. you can access this on your phone right now with your- Okay, your well, here, here's my other thing, Dan, because I work with a multiple of different ages. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be uh, senior friendly. So is there any tangible paper that I can get when I go online and be able to sit and hand it to them. Because like, say for example, we have Thornwood House. Mm -hmm. A lot of those residents are definitely are not able to uh, or understand how to do a QR code. Oh, of course. And that, that we would, we can have a, a link on the website and we will also send you a PDF. How's that? We can that would work. And okay, then in the see. PDF is something that I can print, get it to mm -hmm. them and then scan it and send it back to you guys. Yes, that'd be fantastic. So um, if you could fans. put your email address in the chat and your name um, and that you want the survey, just go survey name and then your email address. We'll get it right to you. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Got a plan. Thank you. Um, but the next community meeting is the 30th, right? The one yeah. that we did today. Yeah. Right, right, thank right. you very much it's for reminding number, me. Yeah. It's still yeah. meeting number one, but... Uh, a phase two round. of meeting number one. Right. So, yeah, round two. so we, we, it's pretty much just, the experience will be the same as what you've just gone through. So 
um, I don't think you'll, it will be just a different group of people. So you could, be, you could participate again, obviously, but, um, but we really wanna make sure we reach out to others in the community and get the you know, broader participation. We think you know, yeah. evening might be a, a better time uh, yeah. for connecting with people. And get the word out. PM. Yes, 7 p.m. on the 30th. And mm -hmm. the link is on the website um, if there is any. I think Yashash feel. So do you have your email address on this? No. Yes. Okay. So it's it's there. Um, we can send it. We can put that in the chat if we want. You want to put your, your email yeah. address in the chat. And so if anyone wants to copy it over, they can do that and email her. And then we, we are happy to send out the invitation directly yep. to any of you and you can pass it on to um, you know individuals in your sort of you know email list yep. and make sure that they attend. Yep, definitely the more the merrier. So mm -hmm. um, yep. any help you can give us to get the word out would be much appreciated. All right. Okay. With so with that I'm gonna <laughs> give you a couple of minutes if you want to copy off um the shash fees. Yes email um, but we're very very you know thankful for you That's and put, spending the time with us and giving us the input um, we're you know we're hoping we're going to see you in a, you know at the next community meeting too not at, which will be we're hoping is in person um, and would like to um, meet everyone okay, what she finished I need to know this is like six of them going in the box Okay, well, thank you. Um, uh, we'll, you know, we'll be sending out, you know, more information on this and, and go to the village website because we'll have um, links to the recording um, and to the presentation. Um, so if you want to look at that again, uh, or if you'd like to send it off to somebody else, that'd be great. So we appreciate it. Bye, guys. Okay. Ha okay. Oh, yes. Have this a great me. weekend and an even thank greater you. Easter. Um, yeah, this yeah, is Neva Jenkins yeah. again. Um, is it possible for me to get the recording? I could put it up on the cable station for people who um, who didn't get it. Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, who would I who would I email? Shasti. Uh, I'll send it to you. Okay. okay great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Excellent. Okay. Take care. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.